Hi class. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to start chapter seven talking about quadratic functions. Now we're going to move into section 7.1, and this is going to be called graphing quadratic functions in what we call vertex form. So what we'll see later on in the class, later on in this lecture, is that the vertex of a quadratic function, and now just pay attention to this, is where the quadratic function like turns. It's either the, the turning point of the graph, so it's going to be either be the high point or the low point of the graph. And that'll make more sense as we continue on. Okay, so first off, the vertex form of a quadratic function. So let's let the function f of x be in this very, very specific form. A, and then in parentheses, times x minus h, that quantity squared, plus k. Okay, so a, h, and k are all going to get replaced with numbers. Okay, so the only variable there is x, really. So this is where a doesn't equal zero. Then if you're in this form, the function f is a quadratic function, and its graph is a parabola. So a parabola is going to look like the letter u when you graph it. So we say this equation is in vertex form. So this is the vertex form. All right, so let's compare the graphs of very two simple things. g of x is equal to 2 times x squared with the graph of f of x is equal to x squared. All right, so if you don't, you know, you're like, how am I going to graph this? So what we can do is we can um, find a table of input-output pairs for the two functions f and g, and they're going to be shown, all right? And for each x value of x, the value of y is twice as large for g of x because you're multiplying it by 2 as you are for f of x. For example, when x is equal to negative 3, well, negative 3 squared into f of x just gives you 9. But negative 3 into g of x gives you negative 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. The table shows the equations or the, the, the functions for other values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And you can see that in each case, the graph of g of x is twice, the values are twice as large. Okay, so what does this mean in terms of graphing? So the graph G appears steeper or narrower when you graph it. Okay, so think of it as a, the graph seems skinnier. Then the graph of F, also notice that the vertex for both functions, so that turning point of, of the graph is the origin. So what I have here in blue is the graph of when you plot these going back, these ordered pairs like 1, 2, 0, 0, and so on. You can see that the graph of F of X looks like a nice U with the vertex is at the turning point for 0, 0. And the red graph 2x squared looks like this, and it looks like it's uh, skinnier. Okay, look like it looks like it fits on the inside. Okay. All right, now let's compare the graph of um, f of x is equal to 1 half x squared with the graph of g of x is equal to negative 1 half x squared. Well, same deal. You're going to put um, in some uh, values for f excuse me, for x into both f of x and g of x, and you're going to see that they're going to evaluate to be the same thing. The only difference is, is that g of x has this negative. So like, for example, when you put in negative 2 squared into this, negative 2 squared is 4 times 1 half is 2. Same thing over here, negative 2 squared is 4, but times minus 1 half gets you 2. All right, so now let's plot these ordered pairs. Okay, so the ordered pair is 3, 4.5, negative 2, 2. 3, negative 4.5, negative 2, negative 2 for the, for the functions f and g. Well, when you do this, the graph of g is the reflection, so it's the mirror image across the x-axis of the graph of f. Note that for each value of x, the y value for g of x is the opposite, so it's the opposite sign of it, all right, so of the y value for the function f of x. So whenever you have the only difference between two functions is a negative number, like a negative sign in front, it's just going to reflect it across the x-axis. It's going to take it and go whoop and reflect it down here. All right, so for a quadratic function of this form, all right, f of x is equal to a just times x squared, okay? So like this, 1 half x squared minus 1 half x squared or 2x, okay? Just whenever there's just a value in front of the x squared. The graph is a problem with vertex 0 comma 0. If the absolute value a is a large number, then the parabola is steep. Okay, like it's this, um, uh, like the, the blue one where it looks skinny and narrower. Right? If a is near zero, like a fraction, the parabola is not steep. It's actually going to be wider. Right? If a is greater than zero, then this parabola is going to open upward. 
All right, and then we saw if A is a negative number, like that negative one half, then the parabola opens downward. Okay, so just so we're clear, the graph of y is equal to negative ax squared is the reflection of the graph of f of x is equal to ax squared just across the x-axis. So they're mirror images of each other like we saw. Okay, let's compare the graphs of the following. f of x is equal to x squared minus 3, g of x is equal to x squared, and another one, h of x is equal to x squared plus 3. All right, so notice the difference here is we have this x squared, and then over here we're subtracting 3 from it. Over here we're adding 3 to it. All right, so if you do a table of those input-output pairs, they're going to be shown on the next slide. For each x value, all right, the y value of h of x, so this one, is 3 more than this. And then similarly, uh, the values of f of x are going to be 3, um, 3 less than g of x. Okay? So you're looking here, we have f of x and g of x, um, and then forgive the typo here, um, this should be over here should be h of x, sorry about that. So when x is equal to negative 3, if you plug it in here you get 6, here you get 9, here you get 12. The difference is in that in each case, this minus 3 from just x squared is moving it down 3, this one is moving it up 3. So when you go to sketch these, all right, the sketch of h of x is equal to x squared plus 3, we translate or move. All we're doing is we're moving the graph of g of x, x squared, up 3, just going up 3. All right. Similarly, the sketch of the graph of f of x is equal to x squared minus 3 in red here. All it's doing is taking the x squared and moving it down 3. So what I'm hitting at here is whenever you have just a plus constant or a minus a constant here, all it does is it takes just the x squared graph and either moves it up that many units or moves it down that many units. That's all it does. All right, now let's try this one, right? Um, let's compare the graphs of g of x is equal to x minus 5 squared. So now this is weird. The minus 5 is in parentheses, but the graph of f of x is just equal to x squared. All right, so we're going to show a table of input outputs here. Okay, here's g of x, right? Uh, notice when you plug x is equal to negative 1, right? You get negative 1, but then minus 5 is negative 6. Squared gets you 36. Wow, that's weird. And so on. So you have 36, 25, 16, 9, 4, 1. And then when x is equal to 5, only then when I plug 5 in here, I get 0. This is the turning point. See, it's going lower values and then higher values. So it looks like the vertex, like going back was at zero, zero here, for this problem, it looks like it's getting moved over five units to the right. So when you sketch the graph of g of x here, all right, g of x is the one in red, all right, and what it does is it translates, translates or moves the graph of f of x is equal to the x squared to the right five times. So it's taking this graph and going, whoop, 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 moving it over five times. So whenever there's something inside the parentheses, right? It's going to move it the opposite way you think. So if it's minus 5, it's going to move it to the right 5. And if it's actually, if it was plus 5, it would move it to the left 5 units. Okay, so here's the thing. If you want to sketch a graph of something like this, f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, where a is not equal to 0, here's the first thing to do. Ignore the h and the k, right? Just sketch the graph of y is equal to a times x squared. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to translate the graph from step one, the one you just moved, by moving it to the right h units if h is greater than zero, or to the left if the absolute value of h units, if to the left by the absolute value of h units, if h is less than zero. So depending on the value of the sign here. So basically if it's minus h, moving it to the right. If it's plus h, you're moving it to the left. All right, so now all you've done is you've moved it to the right or to the left, but then you've got this plus k. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to translate the graph from step two by k units. All right, so you're going to move it up k units. All right, if k is greater than zero or down k units if k is less than zero, if there's a minus sign here. So if it's plus three units, you move it up three. If it's minus three, you move it down three. All right, let's sketch the graph of this, this one right here. So f of x is equal to negative, and then in parentheses, x minus 4 squared. 
that. So the equation of S is already in this standard form, right? So my value of A right here is a negative one. My value of H, so it's minus H, so it's minus four, so H is just four. In the K, there's no plus anything, so K is zero. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is sketch then just negative and the value, like I said, negative AX squared. Well, that's just negative one squared. So that's shown in blue. So I'm just gonna take, plug in some values for X and I'm gonna notice that it's gonna flip over like this. Then the next thing I'm gonna do, since H is equal to four, I'm gonna translate the graph that I just sketched here in blue to the right four units. So I'm literally gonna go whoop and move it over here. And then since K is equal to zero, there's no moving the graph up or down. And this is just the graph right here. So notice how I flipped the X squared got the upside down U, then I took it and I whoop, moved it over four units. All right, you can check the input output pairs of F lists in the table below, and the points do fall on the sketch parabola. So what we just did works. All right, finally, you can use a graphing calculator to verify this. If you plug this in, you'll see that the graph is indeed what we just got. All right, so one of the important things to note here is the vertex of the graph of a quadratic function, all right, in vertex form. So if it's this f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, the vertex of the turning point will just appear at h comma k. So if you look back here, all right, we said h was 4, k was 0, and we saw that the point 4 comma 0 was the vertex. So it works. All right, so let's sketch the graph of this. F of x is equal to 1 third times x minus 5 squared plus 3. All right, and then let's find the domain and range of this function. So remember, the domain is all the allowable inputs. And the range is all the is what the outputs take up. So again, start by sketching the graph of just 1 third x squared. All right, that's going to be shown in blue. The inside here is five, so we're gonna move the graph to the right five units. And then since K is three, we're gonna translate the graph by moving it up. So here's what we did. Sketched one third. Then we moved it over to the right five, or sketched what Y is equal to one third X squared. And then we're gonna move it over five, up three. All right, and you can see right here that the vertex, vertex is HK, or five, three. Look, five, three. That's the vertex, the turning point. All right, so just so we're clear, the domain of something like this, the domain is the allowable inputs. So the domain is all, all real numbers. You can plug in any value for X. And then the range is the lowest possible value it takes on, which is three, all the way to infinity. All right, let's talk about finding the equation of a quadratic model, right? How you do this by hand. All right, so the percentage of women ages 16 and over who work are shown in various years. Okay, so what this means, um, in 1980, 51% of women, 51.5% of women 16, year old or, 16 years or older worked. And then all the way up to 2000, it was a 59.9% worked. And then for some reason by 2015, it was down to 56.7%, okay? So, that's, you know, 2015, 56.7% of women aged 16 years or older had a job or were working. Okay, so let's define a function. Let's have f of t be the percentage of women aged 16 years and over who work at t years since 1980. Okay, because we're going to pick t as equal to the year since 1980 because that's our starting value. So first thing I want to do is I want to find an equation of f. What is the vertex of the graph? All right, what does it mean in this situation? And then finally, let's use F to estimate the percentage of women ages 16 years and over who will work in 2021. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is um, use a graphing calculator to uh, draw a scatter plot of the data. Okay, once you do that, it appears that a quadratic function would describe the situation best. Because if you look, it looks like it's gonna look like an upside down U. Okay, so you don't wanna use a linear. The next thing you got to do is you got to find the equation, right? So what you would do is you would pick a point that looks like it's going to be the vertex, okay? So if you look back here, right, at 20 years, 
um, since 1980, you're really close to uh, 60%. So just go a little over and say, you know, uh, probably at uh, 22 years since 1980, 60% of women uh, were working. All right, so to find an equation, all right, we select the highest point, which we see is 22 or estimate to be 22 comma 60 to be the vertex. So that means that H is 22 and K here is 60. So I'm just going to plug those in like that. All right, next what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to choose, because i got to figure out what A, the value of A is. Okay, so next you're going to choose another data point from the parabola. Right, imagining that the vertex is that point 22 comma 60. In this case, let's just choose this point, 5 comma 54.5. So looking back, I'm just choosing this. Five years since 1980, the value was 54.5. All right, so to find A, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute 5 in, because that's a year since 1980, and the percentage of women that were working is going to be for F of T and solve for A. So watch what happens when we do that, all right? Replacing the 5 in for T, 54.5 in for F of T, all right? Figure out what 5 minus 22 is, minus 17. Square it, you get 289. Let's subtract the 60 over, so you get minus 5.5 when you do that. Now divide both sides by 2, 289, and you get A is equal to negative 0 0.19. So that's the value of A that goes in front. So the approximate equation here is f of t is equal to negative 0 0.019, and then in parentheses, t minus 22 squared plus 60. All right, so to check how well this uh, model fits the data, all right, it looks like if you were to plot the data and then plug this graph into your graphing calculator, man, it looks really good. It fits the data really, really well. Okay, so what is the vertex of the graph? Well, we, we picked that to be 22 comma 60. So what this means is that 60% of women ages 16 years and over worked in 22 years since 1980, which is 2022. And this is the highest percentage for any year. This is according to our model. All right, so the next one we wanted to do was, was evaluate or find the percentage of women that worked in 2021. Well, that's T is equal to 41. So all you're gonna do is simply plug that into your equation place 41 in for T. If you were to plug all this into your graphing calculator, 41 minus 22, square it, multiply it by negative 0 0.019, and then add 60, you'd get 53.141. So what we're saying is that in 2021, about 53.1% of women ages 16 years and over will work, and this is according to our model. Okay, so here's what you're doing. All right, if you want to find a quadratic model of vertex. Okay, first thing you're going to do is create a scatter plot of the data. Imagine that a parabola that comes close to or contains the data points and select a point HK to be the vertex. All right. Although it's not necessary to select an actual data point, sometimes it's often inconvenient and satisfactory to just select the highest possible value for K. Select a non-vertex point, <coughs> not necessarily a data point, but again helps if it is of the parabola, substitute that into the coordinates of the equation, like I did in the example, and solve for A. And then finally, substitute your result in for A. You picked H and K, and then you found A, and just substitute it right in. Thanks, class.